In this calculus exercise, we are asked that if a ball is thrown into the air with a velocity of 40 feet per second, its height in feet, t seconds later, is given by the equation y equals 40t minus 16t squared. Part A is find the average velocity for the time period beginning when t equals 2 and lasting a 0 0.5 seconds, b 0 0.1 second, C, 0 0.05 seconds, and D, 0 0.01 seconds. So, part B says estimate the instantaneous velocity when T equals 2. So, this is sort of a five-part question, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And for teaching and illustrative purposes, I'm going to start out with drawing the graph. I'm just going to put F of T equals 40T minus 16 t squared. And if we notice, this is actually a parabola. I'm just going to draw the graph. And taking what we learned in algebra, we did a lot of these problems where we found the zeros and where the graph crosses the x-axis and the y-axis. And I already did that. We have 0, 0. And the center of the vertex has the t value of 1.25 and then it crosses 2.5. The parabola is going to go something like this. Uh, this is about what the parabola looks like. And again, we have our x-axis, or independent variable, uh, t, and our height as the dependent variable, and our function f of t. And I've calculated the max height right here to be 25. Uh, that's just by using what we learned in algebra. So we have the point 1.25 comma 25. And what that means is, is first the height is at zero and then it is thrown upward and it reaches 25 feet in the sky and then it comes all the way back down and it's back to zero 2.5 seconds later. But what it's asking us to find is what is the instantaneous velocity when t equals 2. Now, uh, t equaling 2 seconds is about right here. So that is this point right here. And so when it's asking us to find the instantaneous velocity when t equals 2, I mean, what is the velocity at this point? we're really finding the tangent line. As the ball is thrown upward, it is not a constant speed. Initially, it is 40 feet per second. So right here, the instantaneous velocity at the start is 40 feet per second. As the ball goes higher, its speed decreases until it reaches this point at 1.25. What's the slope of that? It is a slope of zero. And that means that at this point, at this instant, the instantaneous velocity is uh, zero feet per second. It's not moving. So as the ball is thrown upward, it gets to be about right here. And then it's zero, and then it comes back down. But as it comes back down, it is speeding up because it's accelerating uh, due to gravity. So this is kind of where we have the overlap of mathematics and physics. So we could agree from here to here, it goes from zero feet per second, and it accelerates, meaning that as time passes, it gets faster and faster until it reaches the ground again. And we're trying to find the speed at that point. The tangent line has a slope at one particular point. Since it's a slope, therefore it is a rate of change. And so it's going to have a unit over another unit, like miles per hour, or feet per second, or gallons per minute, or anything that we are measuring. But before we're taught derivatives and using the easy methods of finding derivatives, we got to understand the concepts of what the heck we're doing. <laughs> now I want us to notice that here for part A, it says to find the average velocity, and here in part B, it says to find the instantaneous or estimate the instantaneous velocity. So taking the average velocity, 
is basically what we learned a lot in algebra, finding slope between two points. And it's the, an average um, because a slope or a line is constant. Here you have a curve. You have all these slopes at every single point at the curve. And the question is, what is the slope exactly at this point, at this instant? And how could we find it if we only have one point? That's the idea of the instantaneous velocity, the limit, and ultimately uh, the derivative. But in part A, it says to find the average velocity, so we're going to be using secant lines and, and finding slope. But let's define what uh, velocity is. Uh, the velocity, which this means it's a vector, you'll usually see this in physics. Um, velocity is displacement over time elapsed. Displacement is denoted as delta x, delta t, from what time to what time. And this really doesn't get into detail about the difference between displacement and distance. But displacement is the distance from where you started to where you ended up at, regardless of the actual path that you take to get to there. So let's start with part A. And it says to find the average velocity from the time period beginning when t equals 2, which is right here, and lasting 0 0.5 seconds. So that doesn't mean to go to 0 0.5 and draw a line. It means you start at 2 seconds and go 0 0.5 seconds. So that would be 2.5 seconds. First, you have the change of y and the change of x. And I want us to recall that slope is the rise, or delta y, over delta x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for a of part a, we have our initial time, which I'm going to abbreviate as t1, at 2 seconds. Uh, t2 is going to be 0.5 seconds later, which is 2.5. It could also be asked this way, bracket 2.0, 2.5. This refers to uh, the closed interval between 2.0 and 2.5. So from t1 to t2, what is the average velocity between that time interval? So here's 2.0 and here's 2.5 and here is the secant line right here. Okay now first here's an easy way to do this. Um, here is, let's call this x1, y1, and let's call this x2, y2. And slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, our x value is in terms of t. So technically, I'll call this t1. And what would y1 be? Well, you plug in t1 to the function to find the corresponding y value. So the y value, let's call it f of t of 1, and likewise here, this would be t2, our second point on the x-axis, and let's call this, you would plug t2 in, in the function, and make a substitution, this would be f of t2. So, to put it in this formula, m equals f of t2 minus f of t1 over t2 minus t1. And for this problem, this is t1 and that is t2. So let's go ahead and solve it. So the slope here would be f of 2.5 minus f of 2.0 divided by 2.5 minus 2.0. And this is called the average rate of change. So this is going to be our general formula from here on out. So let's go ahead and solve this. That means that 
we will plug in 2.5 into this function and when we do so, since I've pre-calculated this, this is going to be 0. Now we're going to plug in 2 into this equation. We're going to get 16 divided by 0 0.5. Now I want you to notice something that our time interval uh, here is actually what they give us, 0 0.5 seconds technically. So we could call um, our delta t to be 0 0.5 seconds. I really want us to uh, remember that right there. So going back here, this is going to equal negative uh, 32. That is the average rate of change. That is the slope of the secant line right here between 2.0 and 2.5 right there. And again, just like my at the end of my last video, it's like, what the heck do these numbers mean? Well, it means the, the slope, uh, which means it's a rate of change. So it's going to be something over something, in this case, feet per second. Now let's go on to part B, part B of part A. T1 is going to be the same because we're always going to begin when t is 2 seconds and lasting 0 0.1 seconds. So we're getting closer. That's about, that's like that point right here. And we would put the point in right there, draw out the, the secant line, and find the slope. So our t2 is going to be 0 0.1 second after 2 seconds. So that would be 2.1. Uh, you could also see it written like this. The close interval 2.0, 2.1, and we're finding the average rate of change, which is the average velocity in this uh, problem, uh, between 2.0 and 2.1. So our slope is going to be f of 2.1 minus f of 2.0 divided by 2.1 minus 2.0. Uh, you will get negative 25 point six uh, feet per second which is less steep than negative 32 feet per second now the reason why it's negative of course is only because it's going in the downward direction but the magnitude of the velocity is of course positive it can't go in negative speed but it's just saying that it's going in the downward direction and in this case the ball is thrown up in the air and then back down so I want us to notice that first our slope was negative 32 and now it's negative 25.6. So let's keep in mind that our delta t right here is a 0 0.1. I want us to realize that. Now let's go on to part c of part a and get even closer to 2. This is where we're getting to the idea of a limit again. We're getting infinitely closer to 2, but not at 2. Why? Because otherwise we'll have only one point. And if the interval is from 2.0 to 2.0, well, that would just leave the denominator uh, to 0, and we just cannot find the average rate of change. So for part C, our T1 is going to be 2.0, and T2 is going to be 2.05, and... Uh, you could also see it written out like this, 2.0, 2.05. And so our slope is going to be f of 2. Point, and I meant uh, 2.05 minus f of 2.00 over 2.05 minus 2.00. And that's going to equal negative 24.0. Eight, uh, feet per second. Delta T is, well, it's 0 0.05. Finally, for part D, our T1 is going to be 2.00, our T2, 2.01, which some problems could have 2.0, 2.01, and our slope is going to be, or our, our average rate of change, well, same thing. It's going to be 2.01 minus f of 2.00. Divide that by 2.01 minus 2.00. 
um, and that's going to be negative 24.16 feet per second. And of course you guessed it, our delta T is, well, and as it says up here, 0 0.01. Now before I explain why the heck I'm showing uh, the delta T is right here, let's go ahead and uh, quickly answer part B. Estimate the instantaneous velocity. And based on what we're doing, um, we could safely estimate that the slope at that point right there not estimating, but the instantaneous velocity would be around negative 24 uh, feet per second. Let us, on the side, write out a table. And let's have this be delta t. And the other side, what we have been calculating, the slopes of the secant line, which were our average velocities. So that over bar denotes average right there. So when our delta t was 0 0.5, um, our average velocity was negative 32 uh, feet per second. So this would be in terms of seconds and that feet per second. So when our delta t was 0 0.1, it was negative 25.6. So then when our delta t is 0 0.05, it's negative 24.8 feet per second. When our delta t was 0 0.01, our average velocity was negative 24.16. Okay, therefore, what is it getting closer and closer and closer to? If we are to keep on going even more and more close to 2.0, infinitely more, what is our average velocity getting closer to? The number is negative 24 feet per second. And that is our estimation for the instantaneous velocity, negative 24 uh, feet per second. And again, it's um, only negative because it's going in the downward direction. If you're also taking physics, you know that we have to set up which way is positive, like making right and up positive and down and left negative. Um, it's all relative, but that's just saying that in this instant at 2.0, it's going in the negative direction, and therefore the ball is coming back down to the ground right there. Now, I know I just alluded to this just now, but here's the number that we're getting close to as we get infinitely close to 2.0. And if you remember from my previous video about um, understanding limits, this is uh, the limit. Now it's finally time for me to really explain why I'm emphasizing the delta t right here. Uh, recall that velocity is displacement over time elapsed, but this is an average right here. And doesn't this look like our slope right here? And recall that slope is usually an average, and when we want to get instantaneous, we find uh, the tangent line, which we'll later call the derivative. But hearkening back to my previous tutorial about understanding limits, we found that the limit of some function f of x as x approaches some value a, like 2 or 100 or 1000, um, equals some limit l, which is sort of what we got right here to find the instantaneous uh, velocity. And recall that we found the instantaneous velocity when we set our time interval closer and closer and closer to zero. Therefore, the instantaneous velocity is going to equal the limit of displacement over our time interval as that time interval goes to zero. And that is the instantaneous velocity right there. So I hope that this calculus exercise clarified a few things up for you. And again, calculus is easy. It's just more easy when you um, understand what you're doing and if you have a good background in both algebra and trigonometry. So whatever your passion is and why you're taking, why you have to take calculus, um, just don't give up on that passion. And I want you to have an excellent semester and an enjoyable rest of today.